So I had a very interesting dream last night. I'm going to run you through the dream. And as we go through this, we are going to understand the importance of safety and how safety releases us from the burden of holding on to our trauma and to our pain. Now, <laughs> let me just start by saying my dreams can be pretty funky. They can be quite strange. And uh, they're often quite mixed up and there's a lot happening. It's very visceral for me. It feels very real. It, my dreams are interesting to say the least, right? And so in this dream, I was in this big, big home. Um, it was my home and there were elements of the current home that I live in, um, the, the elements of the, my current home now, but it was expanded into this big, big home. And I walked into my bedroom and the bedroom was massive. I mean, the bedroom was like this hall, right? But I identified it as my bedroom. So again, making some connections here. Look at look at symbolism as, as I'm telling this story and explaining it as best I can for my memory, right? It was from last night, even though it was quite vivid. And there was a lot of commotion outside of the bedroom, which was part of my home. Um, but again, very, very strange. A lot of people, a lot of strangers, people I did not know. Now... I walk into my bedroom and there are two strangers there that I perceive to be a threat. Two very big, big men. And I thought to myself, these men are dangerous in the dream. These men are dangerous. I need to basically mobilize these men. I need, I need to stop them. And they're walking out of the room. And so I go underneath this thing that appeared to be my bed. But it was massive, like a giant's bed. And I grab this bat. It was like a like a baseball bat and I pursue these men but I'm trying to run but I can't I, I, I'm moving really slow I've often had dreams in the past where um, I'm very active in the dream and if I'm having a fight or I'm being violent in the dream or violence is in in against me in the dream I'm very active and reactive and everything's happening in real time so if I'm hitting someone it feels like I'm hitting someone. But this dream wasn't like that. I've also had dreams where I, I want to hit or I want to move, but I'm paralyzed. Or if I'm not paralyzed, I'm moving really, really slow. And this was one of those dreams. So I pursue these men and I'm hitting them with this bat and punching them and punching and punching and kicking, and, but nothing's really happening. But they know that I'm attempting to hurt them badly. And I was in fear like I had a lot of fear in my body it's very interesting and and I'm hitting them but nothing's really happening it's like I'm everything's in slow 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 motion and when I'm making contact with them they're not really feeling it but the interesting thing was with this dream is that they understood and knew my intention to hurt them now instead of hurting me back which in the past I've had these types of dreams where I've tried to hurt someone or defend myself and protect myself and I haven't been able to. It's like no matter, I'll even make contact with someone's face and it will literally be like that. It won't, no matter how much effort and force and talk I feel I'm producing and creating, it doesn't It doesn't match. Like the energy, the intention, the energy, the output or the outcome doesn't match. And this was one of those dreams. But here's something really interesting. I'm attempting to hurt these men. And even though I know I'm not and I'm trying so hard and I'm so frustrated and I'm full of fear and full of anger and full of all these big reactive emotions, these fear-based, trauma-based emotions to an extent, one of these men lays down as if I hurt him, but I didn't hurt him. And he pretended to be hurt or pretended to be, you know, play dead per se. And the other man began to do the same and I just kept trying to hit them because I knew I wasn't really doing that. And then they began communicating with each other and I couldn't hear what they were saying. But they grabbed the bat from me and I thought, okay, now I'm going to be hurt. So I generally, I've had so many different experiences with surrendering to death or the unknown, not only in, dream, in the dream state, but in my physical life, in my emotional life, that I'm generally not too bad with surrendering to the unknown or surrendering to something that is about to happen that I don't necessarily want to happen. Um, not always great at it, human, but um, it's something that I've actively worked on over many years. And so in the dream, I almost surrendered and I expected them to attack me and hurt me, almost having this memory knowing that they're going to really hurt me in this dream. 
They're going to take things away from me that are mine, that I identify with, that I predicate my identity upon. And they didn't. They hugged me. And I was really shocked in the dream. They hugged me. And both these men hugged me and held me. And the energy of that, the intentionality of that was, you no longer need to fight. It's okay, you're safe. And it was like I was holding my breath that whole time. And in that dream, I let the breath go. And as I did that, tears, it is in the dream, tears streamed down my face. And I had this massive relief, like for the first time in my life, I feel safe. Safe enough to be me, safe enough to express, safe enough to attempt to hurt these people, yet they did not want to hurt me back. It's like there was part of me in that dream that wanted to push and push and push and push the envelope, push the limits of how much pain or abuse can these people take before they attack back. But they didn't. So I woke up from that dream feeling a little strange. And there's a few thoughts that have been circulating in my mind about this dream. And one of them is that, you know, we often, in relationship, in intimate relationship, we push the boundaries so much. We want to prove that no matter what we do, this person or these people are still going to care for us. They're still going to love us. We challenge people. We push people. We test people. And then it's like when we really take people to that edge and they say, hey, enough's enough, and they leave or they cut that dynamic part of us that ego part that wants to vest itself in the familiar says see i told you so they're just going to leave you like everyone else and we go back into this cycle of testing people testing their love testing their affection their their integrity testing their their honor towards us and for us testing their loyalty i've done that so much in my past where I've really pushed people to the edge. More often than not, unconsciously, right? It's this, I'm seeking validation, I'm seeking approval, I'm seeking this need to be loved, and they'll prove to me they love me by how much of my shit they're willing to put up with. And in this dream, they just basically said, hey, it's enough. You don't need to keep proving yourself. You don't need to keep testing us. We see you. We see you. And how I interpret that dream is that everything in the dream was aspects of myself. And so where are you not seeing yourself that you have this need to validate yourself outside of yourself, to seek someone else's approval, to seek someone else's loyalty, their happiness, their joy, and how they feel about you and how they feel about life is how you find inner peace. Because I spent a lot of my life doing that, caring so much what other people think, how they see me, how, how, they, how they project on me, how they feel about me. And I made that mean that I'm important if they think I'm important. And this dream was about just drop it, drop the facade, drop the need to prove, drop the need to be, drop the need to impress, drop the fucking need. And can you see yourself? Can you love yourself? Can you honor yourself? Because that slow motion not making an impact impact is me not in my power. It's us not in our power. We set an intention and we're deliberate and we know what we want to do. We, we just can't do it. Whether it's, in this case, hitting someone or hurting, wanting to hurt them, or whether it's making a decision in your life about something that's really important to you, about moving city, about whether you should be in this relationship or stay in this relationship and work more on it, whether you should have children, whatever it may be, whether you should take a particular or specific spiritual path. That slowness and that inability to act on that intention is something blocking you. And for me, how I interpreted that dream was I'm blocking myself. I'm not seeing myself in certain ways, in certain parts of me, and not seeing other parts of me. There's a miscommunication, and I'm trying to find it outside of myself. I'm becoming hyper dependent or codependent as opposed to healthily interdependent with my environment and the people in my environment. And so I get to look at that at a deeper level and a deeper layer because I've done a lot of work on this. And does that mean there's not more work to do? There's not more layers to explore? Well, maybe not. Maybe there is. Maybe there are more layers. 
I get to be with those layers. I get to explore those layers. And so I found that dream interesting. And, I, and you know, I work with so many people in this space of seeking love outside of themselves with, through desperate measures, through fear-based tactics, through manipulation, not to purposely, maliciously hurt someone else, but because they feel so low and so unworthy within themselves that they're attempting everything they can that they know of within their scope of awareness to seek that validation outside of themselves when it's within us. And that dream showed me that today, that there's parts of me that maybe I'm not appreciating about myself. I'm not seeing fully. I'm not embracing. I'm not honoring. I'm not being open and vulnerable enough. I'm not taking enough of a risk. I'm not trusting enough. And I'm maybe in a leaky way or in an unconscious way seeking that outside of myself. So I'm looking into that. I'm looking into where do I seek validation outside of myself? Where am I maybe not in authentic posturing or in integrity? And not because I'm trying to be malicious or hurt someone or because I'm trying to better myself per se, although parts of me would be doing that. The egoic parts that are, are stuck in that familiar state of, hey, we survive when we feel good about ourselves. And one of the ways we feel good about ourselves is by seeking that validation outside of us, making sure we have multiple people in multiple areas of our lives telling us how amazing we are. And feeding off that, not only from a perspective of vanity, but from a perspective of my self-worth is low, I need to raise it. Now, I'm not talking about real obvious, distinct, overt aspects of self here. For me, this is really in the subtleties of how I'm behaving, how I see myself. And is there something that I'm missing? So that dream was a reminder to go a little deeper into self, to say, fuck it, I'm going to own this. And... What happens if I'm a little kinder to myself? Because that's part of it for me. So part of that interpretation is that I'm hard on myself. I'm not compassionate and kind to myself. I'm I'm a taskmaster on myself. And as a result, I'm more often a taskmaster on others. And then I feel guilty and bad about that. I feel even shameful about that. And then there is this element of either groveling or, or feeling sorry for myself or trying to make it up to them and overdoing, overseeing that type of thing and so I get to shift that right I get to not move in extremes because this dream also told me and, and, and showed me that there are still aspects of my personality where I'm all in or all out like feast or famine burn or build that extreme aspect of self and men particularly men really face that in a, in a masculine or hyper masculine dominated society where we lose ourselves in the doing and we lose ourselves in extremes because we define ourselves in extremes because from a young age we learned that we will get attention by being in extremes whether we're extremely athletic whether we are being vigilantes and high risk takers we thrive in that extreme adrenaline rush where we're pushing the boundaries the societal edges of of, of, of boundaries and getting wanting that attention from those that we love or those that we crave that attention for, i.e. our fathers or our mothers or our peer groups. And sometimes that extremity in, in personality forms and maintains itself during our adult lives and our adult relationships. So just some reflections there on that dream that I had, and I think uh, there's something in there for most of us. Power and blessings to you. I'll see you soon.